Okay, we are back. And I, I, I just had to wait for that uh, air raid test to go through. I didn't want to talk uh, over that. So, sorry about that. But it's even better now, because now I'm back with the mayor of Brooklyn Heights, <laughs> Miss Pearl Farsi. I again got my wife and daughter. And we're going to get a little techie. So I, I told you in the last video we're uh, going to move from the beauty of their garden to the beauty of solar. Uh, so let's, let me talk to them while I explain to you how this works. So solar panels make what we call DC power. That's direct current power. But every building uses AC power. So how do we get our AC power? The solar power, which you saw on the other side of the house, comes down as DC power goes into the inverter. The inverter converts it to alternating current or AC power. This inverter is everything. It's, it's the brains of the system. Um, it converts the power. Its most important job is converting the power to AC so that we can actually use it. Uh, but it also has trackers in it to make sure that we don't get too much current or too much voltage so it kind of regulates and does charge controlling. Um, what other points to make about this power, about the inverter, is that this is what you call a grid tied inverter. Um, in the past, firemen, uh, you know, electrical line workers were concerned about solar because they said, we don't understand solar. We don't know if we come to work on it, if it's going to shock us or hurt us. Mm -hmm. So the inverter manufacturers decided to create uh, a mechanism wherein this inverter will not come on if it doesn't see power from the AC from the grid. From the grid. Yes. Yeah. So that basically says if there is a power outage, the linemen, the firemen, uh, they can know of a certainty that they're not going to get shocked by solar power because if there is no AC power coming to it, it won't push out its own AC power. But what it, when it, when there is AC power, when everything is working fine, uh, this inverter sees that power and then says, "Okay, everything's fine. Let's push the solar power into the home." Okay, that's one of the things that it does. Uh, the other thing that this one does, this is a storage. Uh, it also stores electricity. Uh, this is a battery. This is the LG 9.8 kilowatt hour battery. And we have a, a, a situation, kind of what's pretty much across the nation, but as well uh, as in Tennessee and in Nashville, where we're not getting that metering anymore. It used to be my home and others that whatever power you push back onto the grid, they would compensate you fairly for it, even handsomely for it. Uh, and for reasons that I'd love for you to write to NES board members or TVA board members, uh, for reasons that they may know, uh, they stopped doing that. And so they've made it a little more expensive to get solar because now if you push back power onto the grid, you don't get compensated for it. So guess what we have to do now? We have to put in storage. We have to store the power that we're not using so that we can use it later for ourselves. We don't want to push it back onto the grid and then not get compensated for it. And uh, so we put batteries in. So this inverter also regulates that. It, it sees that the solar is providing enough power to the home. And then it says, but I've got extra. So what do I do with that extra? Oh, I'm going to push it over into this battery so that we can use it for later. Also, it says it provides some security for uh, the mayor. It says, you know what? We're going to protect certain loads in her house such that if there is a power outage, she will still have power. So we have a sub panel where we pulled out some critical loads, two refrigerators. We don't want to throw away uh, food if there is a power outage for an extended per uh, period of time. And Wi-Fi. Today, Wi-Fi is a utility. We all have to have it. We all need it. Uh, and so uh, a lot of things are, I know in my house, the television, the phone line, the, all these things are connected to Wi-Fi. So we kind of have to have that. So we've got those things protected uh, by this battery. So if there is a power outage, we've got at least 50% of this bat battery, plus it, whatever the sun is producing to help us keep that load protected and keep that power going until the utility can get back out and fix the lines. So. That is uh, what all this inverter does. There's so much more, but I'll, I'll stop and see if... I have a question. Yes, please, give me... How you doing, everybody? <laughs> <laughs> uh, can this get overloaded? I know it's, sto it's stored. Mm -hmm. it's, say this, there is no outage. Mm -hmm. 
and then and it keep getting stored up can this get overloaded with uh with solar energy that's a great question so these are what you call lithium ion batteries uh that's a I, I love that question because then we can talk a little get a little techy about the battery itself lithium ion is the same battery that's in the cell phone that we're broadcasting from now it's the same battery that's in your uh, your laptops uh what we kind of think about are, are lead acid batteries. Lead acid batteries are the ones that are in your car. Uh, they're the ones that sometimes need to be topped off with water and things like that. That's not these. This is a huge, basically a huge cell phone battery or a huge laptop battery. And But they are a little sensitive. So you don't really want to push this all the way to 100%. It does, what it does, better than other types of batteries is that it can cycle very low. Other batteries don't like to cycle all the way to zero. Uh, this is fine cycling to zero. It just doesn't like to be pushed to 100%. So you, so our upper limit sometimes is 85, 90%. So that's why they tell you with your cell phones and your laptops, once you have it at 100%, pull the cord out so that you can use that power. Because it doesn't really like operating at 100%. It can get a little warm, it can, right. and mm. it can make the battery life shorter. Mm. So, I didn't know that. Uh, I yeah, didn't know that's either. that's a really good question. And that's probably why my laptop battery is starting to lose it, it, its time. It, yeah. it stopped because I kept it plugged in all the, the whole time. Yeah. And yeah. I would say this also. This is just a shout out to Jason. Mm -hmm. He made me study, you guys. <laughs> he made me study. So the stuff he's talking about is not foreign to me. What he's uh, speaking of would be, uh, thank you, would be foreign to the uh, this arbitrarily talking to someone but he has educated me every step of the way and if anything happened it's a little switch box well, he gonna get you gonna get over there yeah we'll go over there well he'll get over there mm -hmm. but uh that if something happened i can switch that thing back on or switch it up that's right but i, I make sure i uh text him or call him to make sure i'm doing good <laughs> yeah. she's wonderful she's doing wonderful so yeah we'll we'll go piece by piece now since yeah. i've kind of so this is your battery as that's we said this is your um, inverter, inverter when it comes, comes in, in from the solar. solar. Yep, and it goes from DC to AC, and so we can use it in the house. Touchdown! <laughs> Touchdown! This is your automatic transfer switch. This actually is the mechanism that will kick it over to the protected loads if a power, if there is a power outage. Uh, this is the AC disconnect switch. So this is if we want to just work on the the battery or in the inverter then we don't want any power coming from the grid. We just pull the lever and we can work on this fairly safely, making sure that uh, our DC isn't hurting. Us. But you can pull that and we'll... Well, well I'm actually... Okay, go ahead. No, why come everything is... I know everything is labeled for you yeah. or for somebody else. I know you know what everything is. So why did you label it? Very, very good question. Again, this is more about... Uh, learning? It's, no, it's, it's great for learning, for sure. But this is also more about our first responders. Our oh, firemen, oh, oh. our NES line workers, or our utility line workers, they need to come in and know what they're looking at. Okay, good. So, so you can zoom in here. I told you about the uh, the inverters, how they're now they're now shut off without AC power. Uh -huh. Recently, uh, line workers have also said that they want the power. They mama probably. Yeah, they want the power to to know that the lines are de-energized quickly. So, inverter manufacturers have said, okay, we're gonna create a mechanism where these uh, power lines de-energize quickly so, so that we know for sure that we don't have to worry about being shocked. They call that rapid shutdown. So now all systems, all solar systems, have to have rapid shutdown if they were made beyond 2017, if your jurisdiction has adopted 2017. So we, so I know now. If I'm a fireman, I come in. I say I got to go in that house, but I don't know what's what. I can come here and say, "Oh no, this system has rapid shutdown," which means if I turn this DC disconnect switch, this is the DC disconnect. That's the AC disconnect. If I turn this immediately within one second, the power stays up at the array. It doesn't come down here, and these lines are de-energized. So I could even cut this if I wanted to. I don't have to worry about being shot because. That's what rapid shutdown does. So again, this inverter is, is the inverter of a solar system is pretty much the brains of any system. You can do an off-grid type system where you've got these things separated into different pieces, 
for, for residential systems, it's all within these inverters. Uh, so your, the labeling is important uh, for your inspector when he comes to say, what do I have here? Do I have everything I'm supposed to have? Uh, and our inspector is probably coming sometime next week. Um, but we're excited and wanted to go ahead and get this film. Uh, <laughs> and I do have a, a question. Yeah, keep going. Now, what is your degree in for you to know how to, how to land in the solar panel um, uh, business? Yes, very good and, question. And what's your degree? Was it all? Was it always geared towards sustainability and always? This is why you're the mayor because you know the right person is there. <laughs> uh, so, my undergraduate degree is in mechanical engineering. I tell this story often. I like to see the stuff I'm working with. So I always was in my circus class saying, I'll never mess with electricity. Because you can't see it. Oh, okay. You don't know how powerful it is until it's too late, right? Okay. So I always said, I like seeing big gears, big old AC systems, so I can see how big that unit is. Well, <laughs> you know, they say, uh, God, uh, man makes plans and God lands. Okay. So I started working in the mechanical world in HVAC and learned about this uh, design process called LEAD, Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design. Also, uh, my senior capstone in undergraduate at Tennessee State University, Go Big Blue, uh, <laughs> my capstone project was about alternative energy. We chose hydrogen, but we had studied a little bit of solar as well. So when I got into the working world and came across solar again, uh, Obama was our president. He was determined to make solar cheaper and more people to be able to access it. Phil Bredesen was our governor. He was determined to make Tennessee a solar state. And I just caught the bug. Oh. And then I had uh, a very supportive wife and family uh, to allow me to pursue it. So the background in mechanical engineering kind of gave me the technical chops. Okay. But then once I saw that the environment with our, our president and state and our governor of the state, uh, I started looking more into it, and that's when I really got excited. I started getting certifications, um, and so I got the uh, NAPSA, which is uh, North American Board of Certified Energy Practitioners. The NAPSA certification, which is kind of the premier solar certification, um, and to date, to our knowledge, I'm the only African American in the state of Tennessee that has that certification. Oh, wow. So, we gotta set out to uh, change that. Yes. And this is a plug for him. Mm -hmm. If you need solar system, make sure you call Jason mm -hmm. Carney. Can you give the information, please? Yes, ma'am, I will. Uh, the number is 615 669 3671. That is the telephone number. The website is www.energyelectives.com. That's www.energyelectives.com. You can email me at sales, S-A-L-E-S, at energyelectives.com. Uh, so all those places you should be able to, to, to reach us and, and to catch us and maybe even get to meet the mayor one day. <laughs> and, and this is another thing I'm going to tell you, too. He doesn't just only install it. He installs it in the air. Mm -hmm. I know about this system right here. And he makes me, not make me study, mm -hmm. but he suggested that mm -hmm. I read over his send me emails. Every time he was doing something, I was out here. I, I'm almost certified myself, <laughs> <laughs> but I can't, I can't, I can't, of course, I, that's not my expertise, but this will also, the main part that I love is helping me to uh, save money. Mm -hmm. Every month, I will save approximately, right here, $117 or more. Mm -hmm. This is a true story. Mm -hmm. My, um, every month it was three fifty. dollars now it's one sixty. Mm -hmm. Calculate, that's more than 117 so we're going to see next month mm -hmm. when this is up and running completely. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put it on Facebook. Mm -hmm. I'm going to send it to his website. Well, he already got it. Cause yeah. got away. Tell him about that. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm going to show that to you next video. I don't want to run it, but we, we're we watching it. We're monitoring it. And, and, and that will leave me up here if you didn't have okay. any. That will leave me up here. So I'm excited, you guys. Oh, Go Big Blue! Go Big Blue. <laughs> this is, and this will be a great feel. Yes. Because you, you um, Check your old boss, and but he's so thorough. He took care of us every step of the way. No matter how many times he'd be out here working, I'm scared not to ask you something because the questions come up. Yep. And usually the average person wanted to stay busy; they don't want to, you know, engage. Mm -hmm. But he engaged tremendously. And I, my children, my grandchildren, know about this solar right. system. And right. uh, that's the next goal: to get two of my daughters get solar on their house. 
We're gonna we're gonna change things. We're gonna change things, and we need great ambassadors like Ms. Fry. <laughs> so here's the the protected load that we talked about, yeah. three circuits, uh, and that this uh, is supported now. But even in a power outage, it's still supported with the uh, solar and the back. That's that. This is the monitoring. This is how we get to see live what's happening, and so. Uh, I'm debating now. You stay here. I'm going to show y'all up front. Oh, she, he told you stay here. You want him to stay here? Yeah. Oh, he got you. He got you. He got you. Ha, that's a good filmer. He is good. A videographer, rather. <laughs> he is good. Okay, y'all. I'm jumping in here. Okay. I'm allowed to use the catch. I'm just refreshing the page. Let it refresh. This is the dashboard. That's what this white device is allowing us to understand about this system. We know right now we've got 1.61 kilowatts coming from the solar array going into the house. It's great. And it's so much that it's dribbling a little bit out to the grid. We don't really like that. We want it to go to our battery. Our battery is at 47%, but those are things that we can program. Uh, so now we why can, is it dribbling out here now? The grid is the... Uh, is the main system. Yeah, now why is it going over there? Because the way we've got to set the program, we said we don't, oh, we want yeah, a yeah, minimum yeah. of 47. Once we meet that minimum, okay. it starts pushing out. Okay. But we can change the minimum up, and when we change that minimum up, it'll start pushing into the battery instead of going into so the So you're going to change to what, yes, like, like 85? There it is, 85. We don't want to go all the way up to 100 because we don't want it to, you know, get warm. Right, so. Yes. But the reason why you're at 47, you're still working on it. That's still working on it. Oh. That's correct. So, okay. This is how, how we're going to be able to monitor. The mayor will be able to monitor from her phone or her laptop at all times and see what she's doing. Mm -hmm. And we're also going to put a, a home uh, system on there where she can see how much electricity she's using per device, stove, refrigerator, mm -hmm. all these things. What are you using? So, hey. You know what? You're leaving on that light in that room too long. I'm seeing it right here on my phone. I, I consciously turn off all my... I've been doing it for yes. 24 years. Yes. <laughs> yes. I would go from room to room, to consciously turn down, I turn off stuff, and unplug. Even if you have... Did you know this? Unplugging your um, cell phone cord. Mm -hmm. they, even though yes. it's not in use, it's, it's pulling energy. Exactly. Lamps and all that. Exactly. I, I read that. Did you tell me that? I may have told you, but I, I, I'm glad that you know it because everyone should know it. Another thing that we do at Energy Electric is do energy efficiency upgrades and we educate yeah, as efficient. well. Uh, we have, we sealed the top plate uh, of her house. We'll put some insulation in a little later. Yeah. But it's important for us to understand phantom loads, right? So phantom loads. The phantom loads. It's those loads you can't really see because you turn the lamp off. You turn the TV off. But that little red light is still using a little power. Oh. The, you know, those things that, like the clock that's on your stove, even if the stove's not on, that clock still needs a little bit of power. Because that's right. That light's on. So mm. people don't understand, you're still using power even when you cut everything oh. off, per se. And unless you unplug Plug it, it, that's when it's completely off. The best way to go about that is to do your best to put it on a wire, on a strip, on okay. a plug strip, and then just cut the strip. I'm gonna remember that. That's the best way to, to save power. And also, he told me, which I didn't know this, that all your um, laptop, all your phones, and all your uh, equipment and stuff need to be on a protective surgery mm -hmm. just in yes. case of a blackout because it will fry. Yep. Oh, who knew that? I, so I, I told, I've told everybody that. Surf and protect. that's the super And I know you used it for the computers, I mean, not for computers, but the printers and stuff. Mm -hmm. But we use it for everything now. For yes. TVs, mm -hmm. I, I've always used it for TVs because be other stuff plugged in mm -hmm. but now i'm using for everything that's right mm -hmm. so i'm educated yeah. this has been a good video we're going we're going to pop out right now we may come in one more time to kind of close out the day but thank you so much for joining us hopefully you've been educated reach out to me if you have any further questions we'd love to uh educate you and maybe even bring you some solar thank you and bring you some solar mm -hmm. that's that's what we're doing <laughs> Call Jason, <laughs> get your solar in, you will not regret it. Because um, we all got to do our part to be the change that we speak of. Right. We all got to make sure that we take care of Mother Earth and that we make sure we take care of all our resources. 
Now's the time. Be the change. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm not hurting, but I don't want to.